Hey everyone, my name is Jamie Lee. Welcome back to my channel and thank you so much for watching this video today. Today's video is going to be a little bit different than what I usually post to this channel because I really want to give an overview of who I am, why I make YouTube videos, and also how I make money at making YouTube videos. I have never created a video on this channel talking about who I am, why I do this. So I thought this might be something interesting for anybody who's subscribed, either subscribed already or who might subscribe in the future and wants to get to know me a little bit better, but also for anybody who's interested in starting a YouTube channel and maybe wants to figure out like how you monetize it, my advice. Also, my dog is walking around in here, so if you hear the little clicky clacky of her claws, that's why. Normally she's not in the room while I'm filming, but today's a bit of a special circumstance, so I'm letting her stay. <laughs> so this is my dog Maggie. She's very cute. She is some kind of Maltese poodle cross. She's about six years old. She's absolutely adorable. Now I am going to include timestamps on this video. So if you are just here for a particular thing, feel free to skip ahead. I will have all of the chapters listed down in the description if you want to go to a specific part. But in general, I thought I would start off with a little bit of Anne about me. So hey, my name is Jamie Lee. I have been making YouTube videos for about four and a half to five years now, but I've only been making them full time and on a super regular basis since January of 2022. I am 29 years old. I live in Ontario, Canada. I am married. I have a fantastic husband. I am somebody who feels like I am always busy and I like it that way. Even if it's just busy with a hobby, I don't like to be doing nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I really have a tendency to overwork myself, but at any given time, you will find me either making videos, editing, making other types of content for social media. I'm very active on TikTok and Instagram. Playing video games, being a nerd is something that I am very, very proud of. I have loved video games since I was a very small child. My favorite games of all time include anything Zelda, <laughs> literally anything, with Breath of the Wild being not my favorite, and we can get into that at a different time if anybody wants to debate that down in the comments. I would say my favorites are Majora's Mask, of course, and Wind Waker, with Twilight Princess also being up there pretty high for me. I'm also absolutely addicted to the Fallout franchise. I replay Fallout New Vegas and Fallout 4 on probably a yearly basis. My husband and I have played through Divinity Original Sin 2 multiple times. Anything like that where it's like an RPG style game where I can really get into it and I'm like enveloped in the world I love. I love quests. I love feeling like I'm getting a lot of character development, but I also love a good grind. I used to play RuneScape a lot when I was younger and more recently I was super super into Path of Exile, which is also a grind fest. I used to stream on Twitch. It's something that I'm considering getting back to because I just like it. I never had a large following there. That was never my goal or anything, but I really, really love video games. I also adore reading. Right now I am reading Brandon Sanderson's Mistborn series. I just read the Stormlight Archives and am in love with them. If you have any book recommendations that are similar to that, I would love to hear it. I also love a good mystery book. The J.D. Robb in Death series is one of my favorite series of all time. I would read any of those books. I'm in love with Rourke, what can I say? I love gardening. We recently bought a new house in April of last year and it is a much larger piece of land than it, the last house that we had. So we have a really nice big veggie garden for the first time this year. It went really, really well. There were definitely some things that I think we need to do differently next year, but we had a really good harvest. I <laughs> am getting a little bit sick of tomatoes. I planted way too many plants, so I've been having to eat them at every meal. Same with cucumbers. I still have so many cucumbers. Right now we're just harvesting our corn and a bunch of acorn squash. We have one gigantic pumpkin that I'm very excited for. Fall is my favorite season of the entire year. I love apple picking 
and you know all of the warm comfy cozy desserts anything apple or pumpkin i'm all about that i think that they are delicious i also adore halloween my family growing up was not a Christmas family. We were a Halloween family. We always decorated, went all out. Our entire family dressed up in like coordinated costumes. It's just a joy to me. I love handing out candy to kids on Halloween, seeing all their cute little costumes. One of my favorite days of the entire year. I have an incredibly close relationship with my family. I have one sister, her and I are best friends. We do a lot of stuff together and my entire family gets together all the time. We do a lot of fun family activities. We go see musicals and plays. I also absolutely love to cook and to bake, but I hate cleaning up after, and unfortunately, my husband and I are the same. We both love to cook, and we love to bake, and we love to experiment and make new food, but we hate doing the dishes. So there is always at least a small pile of dishes that we have to clean before we can make dinner from the night before because we never do them after dinner time. People can say that that's laziness. We just love to spend our evening together, doing stuff together. We don't want to clean the dishes at night. I am also a vegetarian. I have been for more than five years. I'm not sure the exact date or number. I do occasionally still eat a piece of fish every now and again, only sustainably sourced fish but I became vegetarian for ethical reasons, for animal loving reasons. Basically, I saw a cow looking at me out of the back of a slaughter truck once and vowed on that day I was never gonna eat meat again. And I've stuck to that so far, maybe that'll change one day, but if I were to go back to eating meat, it would have to be sustainably sourced, more ethical farming. I could never go back to factory farmed meat. And I want to make it very clear, other people can eat whatever they want. I am not the type of person that's ever going to harp on you about what you eat or your choices, but if you ever come over to my house, I will make you the most delicious vegetarian feast, complete with starters, sides, desserts, and you will not miss the meat. I'm a very good cook. Now that's basically a little overview about me. If you have any questions about that, obviously let me know down in the comments. So happy to answer anything. Now, why I started this YouTube channel. I specifically made this channel because of one purchase that I made, and that was a pair of light pink Gymshark leggings. Now, I bought these leggings based on the review of two different huge influencers at the time, and I'm not going to name them because this was like five years ago, who swore up and down that these leggings were squat proof and amazing and they were light pink. So I was like, oh my God, light pink leggings that are fully squat proof, like this sounds incredible. I obviously love pink. I have always loved pink. So I had to get the leggings and they were sheer. Like if you wore any color of underwear underneath them, just standing still, you could see everything. If you didn't wear underwear, you could see everything. And I was so upset about this experience. And like, that was when I really realized like influencers are being paid to give me an untruthful, opinion, they're being paid to tell me what the brand wants me to hear, and it really made me mad. So I made my first ever video. I remember being so nervous to film it. It felt so awkward. It did not feel like it does now. Right now, I feel like I'm talking to friends when I record videos. Back then, it was very awkward and uncomfortable, but I desperately felt like the truth needed to be out there about how much of a scam these leggings were. And I started making videos, you know, every maybe once a month, maybe every few weeks. It was not on a regular schedule at all. It was just kind of when I felt like making them. And it was never intended to be a job or a way to make money. I want to make that very clear. I 100% have always gone into making YouTube videos as a way to share the stuff that I like, a way to warn fellow women about things that are not worth their money, and also as a way to buy more clothes and not feel guilty about it. I cannot deny that that was part of it. I truly do feel like I have a bit of a shopping addiction. I love shopping. 
I always have since I was a kid. We did not have like a ton of disposable income to go shopping a lot when I was younger. And when I was in high school, I had a school uniform. So I kind of got out of high school, went into university, had no money and not very stylish clothes. Everybody always looked nicer than me 100% of the time. And when I graduated university and got like a big girl job, I started spending a lot of money on clothes, on accessories, on things that made me feel really good. And in a funny way, even though I started the channel as a way to say, oh, well now I'm making a review about it. So it's justified. I actually feel like I consume a lot more consciously now after five years of doing this. I still buy probably much more clothes than the average person. However, I return a lot of it, I donate a lot of it, and I give a lot of weight to family and friends. I also now have companies that just reach out and send me clothes, which is really, really nice. It feels awesome. But I think I've burned, not necessarily burned bridges, but I make a lot of companies really uncomfortable when they reach out to me because I always send them a big paragraph long disclaimer that you can send me whatever you want. If you want my address and you want to send me something, feel free. I never guarantee that I will showcase something in a video. I always say if I hate it and I have nothing nice to say, I'm not going to show it. I am never going to only say nice things. I'm always going to give my unbiased review. And I'm always going to base that review on how I would feel if I bought the product at full price. So if you're sending me something that has a value of $200, it better be worth $200 or else I'm gonna call that out in the video. So a lot of companies, I send them that and they ghost me forever and I'm okay with that because I do not ever want to come across like I'm recommending something that's not good quality. I'm only ever going to recommend stuff that I love and that's the reason I think that I've continued to enjoy posting videos on this channel. Now, this is a part that I think will be interesting for people who are considering becoming YouTubers or making content for social media. How do I make money? So my channel actually achieved monetization a few years ago. I believe it was in 2019. I had one video that went wildly viral and that basically gave me enough watch hours to monetize this channel. What does that mean? That means that you can make revenue based on the ads that YouTube displays on your videos. It is no money. <laughs> right now, I believe I'm averaging around 40,000 views a month, maybe slightly more than that. And I probably make 150 bucks on ad revenue. That is not enough to live on. That is not even going to cover the costs of buying products that I want to review. It truly is so little money. Unless you are literally having like 10 million views a month, you are not going to make enough money on ad revenue to survive or even for it to be like a side gig, most likely. And that's just the sad reality. I can't see a time where I would ever be able to live on like ad revenue. Now, why that's interesting is in January, I actually quit my full-time job. And that's a whole other story. The job got to a point where it was borderline abusive. I dealt with what I would call borderline sexual harassment. I was basically overworked to death and they were trying to force us to go back to the office full-time and I live like an hour away. It just was not realistic for me. So I decided to try out doing YouTube full time. And at the time I was like, I will give it six months and if I don't make enough money that I feel comfortable with, then I will get another full time job. And I was working in operations and administration at the time for a post-secondary institution. I don't wanna give too much information about my employer, obviously, because I left not in a good headspace. So at the time of me leaving, I basically was only making ad revenue and I had just signed on to be a NYX ambassador, which I was very excited about. That was an incredible opportunity, but I knew that that was not still not going to be enough money to survive. So I started looking at other ways that I could monetize my content. Now, because of the nature of my videos, obviously I'm reviewing new stuff all the time. And I was like, the easiest way would be to have some kind of like commissionable links 
but I am not somebody that has connections to like the influencer industry. I don't know people who are in the industry. I could not ask anybody for advice. So I did a lot of research and basically found magic links and like to know it. So those are the two main ways that I make commissionable affiliate links for stuff that I have actually purchased, tried, and already reviewed. I'll create a link for that, include it in the description, and if people decide to buy something, I make a small percentage of that. And I think you'll find most people who create a lot of content online, especially in like fashion or like gaming is very similar. They make most of their money through those like commissionable things or through sponsorships. Now I, full disclosure, have never had an official sponsorship, so I've never made money that way. I have had many, many offers, but none of them have ever been with terms that I am comfortable with. They always include stuff like only saying positive stuff. Usually they want you to just start out saying positive stuff right away. They aren't willing to like send you something for you to try before you make that decision. And I will never be okay with that. And if other people want to do that, good for them. I'm glad for them. Get, get your bag. But my morals could never. I am also part of a couple company specific affiliate programs that usually pay you slightly more on a per purchase basis. The one that I am proudest of is of course the NYX one, but I do also have an ongoing relationship with Kitsch, which is the company that makes the overnight hair curler that I love and I use a bunch of their other products too. And also with Halara because I had already been reviewing their stuff and trying their stuff and actually wearing their stuff for months before they ever reached out and were willing to, you know, work with me on an affiliate basis. So I did decide to take that one as well. Now, magic links and like to know it are a little bit different because you link to all kinds of different products and different brands based on if they are registered with one of those two companies. So I use both of them so that I can get different brands. There are some that are on one, but not the other and vice versa. I personally feel like for Canada, I tend to use magic links more often. I just find they have more stuff that I oftentimes buy. Now, if you are looking to try out either of those, I'll include some links to them down in the description box, like some referral links. Both of them are ones where you need to get accepted into the program. Like you have to apply and get accepted. So just be aware of that, like if, you don't feel like your content is at a point where maybe you will be able to register for those, I would just, once again, go to those links, check out what the requirements are. I would just hate for you to apply and then somehow end up getting blacklisted because you didn't meet the requirements. So definitely check that out first. But I would say I make an okay amount of money between all of those things. On a bad month, maybe $1,000 on a good month, maybe three to $4,000 total net income. Now I want to be really clear here. I am making videos and making content full time right now. An average week for me would be like Monday and Wednesday, I get up, get dressed and film stuff for pretty much the entire day, YouTube in the morning, TikTok and reels and shorts in the afternoon. And then I have at least two days a week that I'm basically editing all day, answering emails, talking to brands. And then I have one day that is almost entirely dedicated to planning future content, deciding what I'm gonna do specifically for each day the following week. I literally write it out in a planning journal or like an agenda. I'll usually use that day to research like some brands that I might be interested in reaching out to. Never be afraid to reach out to a brand. Cold calling is better than nothing. And I'll also use that day to finish up any stuff that I didn't get done. Like maybe there's another random TikTok I wanna film. Maybe there's somebody that I want to reach out to via email that I never got to earlier in the week. And that is kind of like my overall catch up day. And I usually try and do that sometime in the middle of the week. Now I feel like we're kind of transitioning into what I wanted my next section to be, which is advice for people who want to be YouTubers or on social media in general. So my first piece of advice is kind of what we were just talking about, set a schedule. Even if you're doing this like on the side of your full-time job, I did that for many, many years. I released one video a week. In addition to working a very grueling full-time job, the only way I was able to maintain that was 
setting a very strict schedule of, okay, every Saturday morning I will film a video. If for whatever reason I am busy Saturday morning, I will film it Sunday morning. No excuses, 100% always did it. And I would always set that Monday night would be the night that I would edit every single Monday. Having a set schedule and knowing at least like a week or two in advance, like what you plan on filming and putting out will help it be far less stressful. It makes it feel fun when you get to work in the morning to film a video. You already know what you're gonna do. You have everything planned out. I do also think that on social media, consistency is key. And there are times that I've struggled with this, especially when I was working full time. And near the end of my job, it felt like my life was crumbling apart. Like I went through the worst mental health of my life. There were times when I slipped off of being consistent and it takes time to recover from that algorithmically. The algorithm absolutely punishes you for taking too much time off. And that is super unfortunate to say, even if I would miss like a week of posting, my next video would get no views. And that still happens now if for whatever reason I'm on vacation or whatever and I don't post two videos that week, I only post one, it, it can be very, very bad. That's not to say don't live your life, that's just a warning. It can be very demoralizing, but the people that really like you will stick around and the people that don't won't. And that's the way the world works. Now, next thing, huge piece of advice, get comfortable with just blocking people. Now on YouTube, it's a little different. You hide people from your videos. They can still watch them, but they can't interact with them. Or, and I'm not sure what that looks like from their perspective, but I have blocked probably a thousand people or more, mostly men. And if you are a woman on this platform, be prepared for an absolute horde of the worst, most disgusting men on the planet to comment on your stuff, try and send you private messages, make clips of your content and try and make it absolutely disgusting. I have to get stuff taken down all the time. Unfortunately, you kind of have to have a thick skin. It gets to me sometimes, especially when individual videos just end up on this absolutely perverted, disgusting like man side of the platform. Just block them. If they're being creepy to you, it's not worth your time. Do not engage with it. Literally block them immediately. That will make it a better space for women who do want to comment on your stuff. You don't need to deal with that. It's not worth your time. And my absolute number one piece of advice for anybody looking to start a YouTube channel in particular, make sure you're doing it because you love it. This is not a quick way to make money on the side. This is not a quick and convenient side hustle. There are some people who are going to use it as a side hustle and it's going to work great for them and they're gonna make a lot of money. I just don't think that it's realistic to start out with that goal in mind and achieve it quickly enough that you will be satisfied. I think you'll always feel a little dissatisfied and it will feel like work. And I truly believe that this platform should be fun. Even at my lowest mental health, recording videos still was so fun to me. I loved editing them. I loved seeing the comments, seeing how people liked it. And I think going in with that passion for what you're doing and really throwing yourself into the process, learning new stuff about editing just because you like to, not because you feel like you have to, making really fun, creative thumbnails that you just like will always serve you better than trying to get more followers because you're broke and you need more money or desperately trying to like do follow for follow with people, joining like comment back groups and commenting on a whole bunch of people's stuff. I feel like it comes across to your audience as disingenuous. And once again, if that's what you wanna do and you're just here to make a quick buck, obviously once again, you do you, but I just think the best advice is do it because you like it. I know there's also so much advice on social media right now about niching down and only doing a very specific niche thing. I don't think you have to do that. I think that might get you more immediate views and followers from people who also love that one specific niche thing. But to create a community 
around your content. I think it is a good thing and should be encouraged to show more sides of yourself to maybe branch out and try other things. Like I would love to post a couple cooking videos and I think I might do that. Show some of my favorite things that I love to make. I've been doing that on TikTok a lot and it's been very freeing. Yes, I think niching down can help you grow, but I also think it can make you feel trapped in a box. And that's not always the most fun place to be. Sometimes it's nice to be able to relate with your audience about just being a person. I guess overall my message is have fun with what you're doing. Enjoy your time making these videos. This shouldn't feel like work. Right now it is literally my full-time job and I still wake up every morning being like, wow, I can't believe I get to do this. This is so fun, it feels incredible. I love doing it and it makes me really happy. And if I reach a point where it doesn't anymore, I will get a different job. I'm not too concerned about that. I think it's important to have that passion, especially if you're just starting out fresh. And also know that growth is not immediate and growth is not linear. You might have some videos pop off and do really well. That doesn't mean your channel is, you know, going to be completely viral overnight. And being viral is not the be all and end all. When my video went viral, I got a lot of very creepy men who subscribed to my channel and it was awful and I hated it. And I strongly considered deleting the video that made me go viral. Instead, I ended up blocking a thousand plus people. <laughs> and I want to really say, I don't think this is talked about enough. All followers are not good followers. Like if you are trying to speak to women and that's your audience, women between the ages of 18 and 40, like those are the best followers you can have. Anything outside of that is like a suboptimal subscriber. And there's nothing you can do about that. If those people like you and they wanna stick around, they're gonna stick around. And I'm personally okay with that as long as they're not being creepy, rude, anything like that. You definitely want to try and tailor stuff to your target audience. And I think truly for me, there are times when I don't do a good enough job at that. That is something that I'm actively working on. This video is going to be way too long. So <laughs> hopefully I got across everything that I wanted to say. Now the last little piece I wanted to talk about was just where am I going from here? I don't know. I love making videos as I think has been made very clear. I love being on social media. I love making TikToks and reels and posting to my Instagram stories for now. Even though I don't make the most money in the world, I am okay with continuing to do that. Now, I'm very lucky. My husband has a very good job. So I know that this is not something that will be possible for everybody. And honestly, I'm sorry about that. I think it would be such a beautiful world if everybody could actually do something that they love for their career. And I hope that every single person that aspires to like have a channel and have a lot of followers, and I don't have a lot of followers. Like in the grand scheme of YouTube, I'm a very small channel, but I still feel very successful. I feel really good about the content that I put out there. I'm happy with the growth that I've had recently. And I think that that is an important lesson to be happy where you're at and not constantly like looking towards the next thing. And like always, if you have any questions about anything, if there's something that I missed and like how I make money, how much I make, how I make videos, if you're interested in what I use to make videos, like what my setup is, I'm happy to show that off. It is not fancy and it could probably use upgrading, but I'm happy to talk about it. Also, like always, if there's any stuff you wanna see in upcoming videos, definitely let me know. Very, very happy to include anything that you find really interesting. I do have a Skims review that will be coming up sometime in the next little bit. That should be good. I also have some more NYX content that will be coming out, a little bit of a compare and contrast, and that is everything that I have for you today. So definitely, once again, let me know if you have any questions. I really appreciate your time. I appreciate you being here like always. I hope that you have a fantastic day and also that I will see you next time. Bye.